Oregon. Hello and welcome to a new video. In today's video, we will discuss how to use TM4C microcontroller pins as a digital input and digital. We will do this task in Code Composer Studio. So let's open Code Composer Studio. If you are not familiar how to download and install Code Composer Studio, I have already uploaded a video for the installation of Code Composer Studio. The link is given in the description. You can visit the video. We want to make a new project in Code Composer Studio. We can using project menu or project wizard. This is the default view of Code Composer Studio. We can click the new project to open new project in Code. Click uh, the project, a new project. This menu opens project wizard. We can select the target, which is the TYC series launch bed, and we can select the appropriate microcontroller from, from the list, which is the TM4C123G. Selecting the appropriate uh, microcontroller, we can select the connection and we can select the stylus inside in circuit debugger in the connection in order to debug our code. Okay. Selecting the connection, we can name our project. Suppose we can name it, it is an digital input different options are available in the project section we can select the empty main.c as we want to code in the C language a new project is open the code composer studio the first step is to include the header file for the appropriate microcontroller so we will cover how to include the header file go to the project location and browse for the header file in order to include the header file in the project Now we are ready to start coding. Uh, I have uh, given the link of the code file in the description. We will copy the code and paste it into our project. file for the microcontroller TM4C123 and in the first part of the code uh, is about the initialization of the port F is an input, digital input and digital output. 
shirt. I was discussing this STM 4C123 microcontroller and we are using the TYC launchpad and the TYC launchpad uh, EF4 and PF0 are connected with switch 1 and switch 2 and PF3, PF2 and PF1 are connected with the three different colors LEDs. <coughs> PF3 is connected with the green LED, PF2 is connected the blue LED and PF1 is connected with the red LED. So, as already discussed, the goal of today lab is that if both the switches S1 and S2 are pressed, the LED should be blue. And just switch 1 is pressed, the LED should be red. And if the switch 2 is pressed and switch 1 is not pressed, the LED green should be on. And if neither of the switches is pressed, all the LEDs should be off. So this is the goal of today's lab. We want to achieve this goal. Is in the TM4C123, most of the registers are 32 bit. So that is why I have defined a long switch one and switch two is we need to read the data register into the switch one and switch two and on the basis of the status of the switch one and switch two we need to turn on different LEDs green blue and red blue if both the switches are pressed switch one green LED switch to red LED and if neither of the switches pressed none of the LED should be turned. Volatile unsigned long delay is as a variable uh, by default all the clocks of the ports are disabled. The first step is to enable the clock of the port F. So there is a register in the TM4C123 microcontroller is system control RCGC2 which is used for enabling the clock of different ports. The 32 bit is we have six ports in our TM4C which is port A, B, C, D, E and F total six ports. So we can turn on different ports if we, if we want to turn on the port A clock we need put or we need to enable or turn the first bit one but let me explain suppose this is a 32 bit only six bit we are using the rest of the bits are reserved for the future so if i want to turn on the port a i need to turn the first bit or i need to is used for the port A. So if I want to turn the port B only, so only this bit will be similarly port C, D, for C, this is for B, E, and this is for F. As already discussed, we need to turn the port F. So we will need to put this combination, which is a binary combination of bits. I can turn this into a hexadecimal combination. So this becomes two and this becomes zero. So I have put zero x, zero, 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 yes, this is 32 bit, the rest of the bits are, these are for the future. And I have put two zero over here. My microcontroller needs some time to enable the clock, so we will wait for the microcontroller in order to enable that clock. So the delay is also for here. The next instruction if there are different registers in uh, the TM4C the some of the registers we will discuss over here as we are configuring the inputs for digital input and output purpose and we are not using the analog functionality alternate functionality so the alternate functionality analog functionality registers should be disabled that is why we have zero the alternate functionality 
registered until then dis- disable the edit of functionality similarly dis- disable the alternate functionality and similarly this registered we can use for the alternate and analog functionalities we have on all we have also disabled uh these functionality using these three registers we need also to unlock the port f and this instruction we use to unlock the port f and so we are using the five pins of port f port 0 port 1 port 2 port 3 and port 4 so we have now you can say allow changes to pf 0 to pf discuss we will uh, disable the analog functionality Alternate functionality and we <coughs> let move the direction. So direction is is used to configure any uh, port as an in in or lay. As we are using PF4 and PF0 for the input purpose, digital input purpose, and PF3, PF2, and PF1 for the output purpose. So for the output, we need to put one for the specific. Uh, Port pin uh, into the direction register, and for the input we need to put zero for that specific pin direction register. Suppose I have these five. Is we have five pins for the port F only. So for the thirty-two bit register, we will use this combination. These five bits only. The rest of the bits are reserved for the future. So. If I play a certain position, suppose I want to uh, select port F0 for the input and port F1 for the output, I need to put 0, 0, 0, 1. Zero. I have configured EF0, which is connected to switch number two as an input, and EF1 as a using this combination for input loop zero and for the output is <coughs> we are using pf4 in pf0 for the input and the rest of the three bits pf1 pf for the output so we will this we can change this into hexadecimal become is 0x0 e and our and an uh, alternate functionality is not needed <coughs> okay is we are using pf0 and pf1 the input purpose digital input purpose we can enable the pull up register using the pull up register so we can put suppose to the pins we want to uh, enable the pull up register to the for pf0 and pf4 so we can put this combination of i the one here convert it to hexadecimal at 0x1 as we are using all the five pins of the port f we can uh, enable the four digital functionalities this is basically a digital enable register so this register will enable the digital functionalities for these five pins so we can put suppose that five pins all ones over it will enable a digital functionality for all these i have to check the status of which one and switch to i Defined switch one and switch two and switches. So a data register, a register used to be to read or write data over any of the pins. And we have configured the pin port F zero and port F port F zero pin and port F four pin for the input purpose. So we need to read. The status of these two registers. PF four is connected with switch two and so switch one, and PF zero is connected with switch two. So I only I I want only to read this pin status. So it could be zero or it could be. Let's see what happens if I press the pin uh, switch. So if I uh, turn on the switch number one, the other. Data register and data register. The port fifth pin, which is the PF four pin of this, becomes zero. And if I press the switch number two, the first pin of that data register will become zero. So for press, it gives you zero. It is connected to the ground, and it is open, so it will 
gave you one. So we will check the status of the uh, switches by reading either it is zero or one. So if it is zero, the switch is pressed. If it is one, the switch is not pressed. So what can I do is that I can end the combination of the data port, which could be zero or one, uh, and you can end with this combination. But if it is zero, it will give you zero. But if you end one with one, it will give you one. So in switch, either it will be zero or one. So two combinations are possible. In this combination, if I end it bit by bit, I will get zero, zero. In switch two, similarly, I can do, I want to get the T zero. So suppose this is combination both the switches are pressed. I can and read the switch one and switch two. Now I can check the status of the switch one and switch two. So if it is pressed, there is an inverter over here. And after inverting the switch one, it will give you one. Similarly, switch two, if it is pressed, it will give you zero and the inverter of it will give you one. And both these conditions will become one, one. So this condition will be true. And what we need to do, we need to turn the blue LED on. So let's see in the diagram where the blue LED is connected. So it is connected to the PF2. I need to turn on the data pin number three, which is the PF2 pin. And I need to turn on PF3 and PF1. So I can write the combination for this in the data register. Please connect, suppose this is PF4, PF3, PF2, PF1, PF0. So I can turn on the LED by putting one over here. This is PF0, PF1, and PF2. I need to this combination into a data register to turn on the blue LED. So I can convert this combination into hexa. I convert it to hexa. Uh, this will turn on the blue LED. Else, if both the press switches are not pressed, the second condition, we need to check switch number two. If the switch number two is pressed, we need to turn on the red LED. So red LED is connected to PF1. So we need to put one, zero, zero. Or here. If we convert this combination, we will get this way. Similarly, if switch one is pressed and switch, sorry, if uh, if the switch one is pressed, I need to turn on the red LED because it is an inverter. If you press a switch, it will give you zero. So we need to turn on the red LED. If switch two is pressed, we need to turn on the green LED, which is connected to the port number three. We will put one zero 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 for PF zero and zero for the PF zero. So this is the code. <laughs> Let me build up project. And okay, the build is finished. No errors. So we can do, we can now start the debugging part. Okay, this is the launch build. Well, here is switch number one, this one over here is switch number two. So let me start the debugging. So let's start the uh, uh, debugging part. If we have, uh, we are running the debugging. If I press both the switches at a time, blue LED need to be on. So you can see the blue LED is on. If I press switch number one, red LED is on. If I press switch number two, green LED is on. If I do not press any of the pin, neither of the LEDs on. Okay. 